Welcome back to another video. Today we're taking a look at the DF64V. So let's get started. Let's get started with the top five pros about this grinder. So number one, I would say the best thing that this grinder has going for it is the bang for the buck. So you get a lot for what you pay for with this grinder. Second pro I would say about this grinder is the build quality. I mean, it's just, it's a great build quality. It's all anodized aluminum. Uh, the variant I have is black. The cup's also aluminum. I mean, everything here that you get is made really well. Also, I did check the alignment. It was aligned from what I could tell uh, from the factory. And I did do multiple burst swaps throughout the testing. And I did find out that it's, it's pretty aligned without uh, shimming it. Third pro about this grinder is uh, it is low retention if you use what they provide you with, which is the bellows. And if you do RDT, which is Ross droplet technique, if you use those two things, you'll get minimal static. Also, I do like that it's basically a full package. They give you the bellows already included. Also, they give you the anti-popcorn device that's basically part of the grinder, which is great because with the DF, original DF, you'd have to buy the, the anti popcorny the fourth pro i would say is that it uses 64 millimeter burst which are fantastic because um the ones that come with it are the dlc uh very similar to the ssp hu which in my opinion i've been getting pretty good cups with the original burst I'm, i was actually surprised i got some great tasting cups from that with my espressos and lattes I do enjoy the stock DLC coated burrs which are very similar to the SSP uh, high uniformity burrs usually you would have to for best results you would basically upgrade the burrs right out of the box but with this grinder you definitely don't need to and that's part of the other part of the uh, pros that I would say is it's a 64 millimeter um, burr set which allows you to pick basically any type of geometry you can do like cast burr from SSP you can do Meisen burr from option O I mean there's an endless list of burrs you could use with this size so that's a big plus if you ever need to adjust or change what you're trying to get from your tastes when you do ever need to change the burrs or switch them out for something different, uh, it is really simple to zero in your grinder because all you have to do is loosen this Allen key and this collar basically moves and you just do it, turn it until you, you hear the chirp and basically back off slightly and you got your zero point. And you can really quickly and easily adjust the collar for your uh, dial indicator. So I really, I really do like that aspect. The fifth pro about this grinder is that it's quiet and also the form factor in size is a lot smaller than it looks in pictures. When I first got it, I was amazed of how small this footprint is. 
Uh, you really don't need much space for it. You can basically fit this grinder in any kitchen in any space. So, and also the fact that it's quiet. A lot of times you correlate uh, quality items or quality grinders with how loud they are. So whenever it's quiet, it just feels more premium in my opinion. So that's a big plus. And I do have another bonus uh, about this grinder. Bonus Pro is the fact that you actually get a display of the RPMs, which is fantastic. Okay, let's get started with the cons with this grinder. Uh, I would say number one con that I found is the lack of the portafilter forks. So there's no real way to direct those into your portafilter. Um, would be nice if there was some kind of stand that you you can get uh, with the grinder that you can direct those but it really depends on how your workflow is number two con is with this darker version uh, the wood is like it seems out of place in my opinion I feel like it should be like a walnut or some kind of a darker wood that fits this color scheme better a little bit third con that I found and maybe it was just with my grinder uh, when I started using the removable chute the magnets didn't really hold they fell out so I had to re-glue them um, <clears throat> that's kind of annoying because the first one fell out basically right when I got it used it like two times and it basically fell out so <laughs> I mean it's not a big thing you can obviously just re-glue them and you're good to go I also did find that uh, since the chute splits in half, uh, coffee dust sometimes tend to get like between the two pieces. So that's that's another thing that is kind of, if it was different design, it might have not had something like that. Fourth con is the permanent retention, and I'll have a video about it. it is it does have a bit more retention than some other grinders um, as you can see around the the bar it has basically grounds get stuck between the the bird carrier that's stationary and the one that moves and it basically creates this ring around which is I guess you could call it permanently stuck in the grinder but it doesn't do uh this is part of the non-exchange grounds so it doesn't really affect your uh coffee in cup quality so it's not a big deal i would say but it'd be nice to see if it if it was less than this fifth con is it has no removable cord so be sure not to mess your cord up uh it would be more of a process to fix if it ever gets torn out or ripped uh, you will have to uh, order the cable and probably have to go inside and get it repaired so that's kind of one of those things where it really doesn't matter as long as it doesn't break so uh, a bonus con I would say is the RPM uh, dial has this light and there's no way of turning it off it'd be nice to either have it dim or turn off uh, I basically just use a cap from a from a bottle and just cover it this one just seems to fit and cover that up so it doesn't light up your room and, it, and when it's dark and plus you it might eventually uh, burn out so uh, it would be nice to either have it dim or turn off or have a way of turning it off I find this grinder to be fantastic for the price the build quality the results I get from it it's just an absolutely fantastic grinder so um, I'd be interested to hear from you guys uh, what you guys think about this grinder and do you have one do you have any issues with it um, I had basically no issues aside from the little magnets falling out um, aside from that I never I didn't really have any issue I did have it stall one time the first first time I used that I put on the lowest RPM and I used mega hard beans like extra extra light beans that they were just extremely hard and it did uh, 
it did stall one time on me but since then i i used the same hard beans i uh upped the rpm to instead of 600 to 800 and i never had that issue i just make sure not to dump all the beans all at once i just uh dose it slowly and it seems to work really well never had any kind of stalling after that also the the this size of burn 64 millimeters they do tend to give you better results with higher rpm for espresso so i don't really see that uh, as an issue because the slower rpm is only good for more of pour over and with pour over since it's a uh, coarser grind you basically would never need to go that fine it and there's just no chance that this grinder would stall i hope you enjoyed my review of the df64v by turin and see you in the next one